Now Diddy is no stranger to doing a dash. As every crime he's been accused of, he managed to wiggle his baby oil bathing ass free. From setting up Shine to be fingered for shooting a woman that Diddy actually pulled the trigger on. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face. In that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York shooting. To paying off Cassie for S assault. Now, Homeland Security stormed Diddy's homes in both L.A. and Miami yesterday after a judge signed off on an investigation implicating Diddy in multiple heinous crimes. Now, one thing to note is if there aren't any credible evidence, a judge won't sign off on anything. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and watch this whole entire video so that you don't miss nothing. Now, hours ago, the Internet was in shock as footage came out showing Diddy pacing around looking crazy while his homes were kicked in by federal agents. Now, it's being told that the agents were armed and hit Diddy properties by air, land and sea. Damn near sound like a third world country invasion. Now, pictures surface of Diddy's sons, King and Justin in handcuffs, and they are too under investigation after being linked to heinous crimes such as propositioning underage girls for nasty ass favors. Now, simply a case of like father, like son. Now, while the rape was going on in both Miami and L.A., Diddy boarded his G5 jet and took off to the Caribbean, and it wasn't to catch some sun rays. Now, just hours ago, leaked photos of Diddy's private jet, grossly titled Love Air, was grounded in Antigua. Now, his travel is now allegedly being restricted in the Caribbean island. Now, rumors surfaced that the jet was on course to hit up Cape Verde due to its non-extradition laws in the country, where Diddy would have been chilling like Russell Simmons evading the law. Now, 50 Cent spoke out about the raid on Diddy, saying, Now, it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. 50 also spoke out about Diddy fleeing, saying, Oh shit, this is a movie. I told y'all, but no, you didn't listen. Now, currently, Diddy hasn't been charged as of yet with anything, but a New York law professor came on the show to break down Diddy's charges if he does get prosecuted. Always great to be with you. Dimitri Shaknovich. I'm a criminal and civil litigation lawyer here in New York City. Uh, I'm also a professor here in New York. And I also, for folks who are interested, I run a YouTube channel uh, at YouTube.com slash at DShack Law. That's D-S-H-A-K Law. Uh, if you're interested about legal stuff, news, things of that nature. Uh, so here we are. Now, Dimitri, let's talk a little bit about this Diddy and Cassie case. It just came out of nowhere, man. Yeah. A couple of days. Um, it's been going viral all over the Internet. Tell us a little bit about this case, because there's been some weird things going on. For instance, um, allegedly, I guess the NYPD came out and said there was a secret um, investigation into Diddy. And then now all of a sudden today, there's no longer an investigation. How do you feel about that? So, look, Anybody can file a lawsuit, right? It doesn't take that much time even. And if you have a lawyer, it takes even less time. And the lawyer could file anything as long as it's not frivolous, right? In violation of the rules of legal ethics, let's say. Um, so it's very easy to file a lawsuit. It's not as easy to get somebody arrested because you have to go to the police. You have to go to either uh, the NYPD here in New York, some other governing body or a prosecutor's office. Right. And they have to determine there's enough to at some point convict this person beyond a reasonable doubt. So what we know now and we'll never know the internal details of the investigation because those will never be out there. What we know now is that he hasn't been charged yet, which means that either the plaintiff here didn't go to the police. They didn't find her credible. They didn't think the evidence was good enough. It could be a variety of different things, or they're still investigating and something may happen down the line. So in the criminal, you know, we don't know much about the civil case. We only know the allegations, but we don't know anything really about the criminal case. Right. If there is one. So do you feel like um, if she does actually win uh, the civil case, will they be able to use that evidence from the civil case to um, proceed with criminal charges? Possibly. You know, it, you get into complex territory about what you can do when you have a civil case, the allegations of which may be involved in a criminal case, right? Because in a criminal case, you have something called the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. In a civil case, you don't have that. So what his lawyers, I'm sure, will be thinking of is the likelihood to which uh, this will lead to a criminal case. 
And if they think it's likely, they may prevent him from providing certain evidence in a civil case, uh, particularly deposition testimony, right? Because that may impact his Fifth Amendment privilege down the line. So it will depend on what they feel is the status of the criminal investigation at the time. Now, it definitely sounds similar to kind of uh, Bill Cosby, because, I mean, I think he was charged on a few criminal cases, but not all the civil ones. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to a lot of cases. I mean, this happens all the time when you have a, a wealthy person that yeah. or a powerful person, let's say. Right. There are criminal uh, allegations and civil allegations that happened with Bill Cosby. It happened with Harvey Weinstein. And you can go down the list. There's a ton. Um, and this kind of thing happens often, right? Because the conduct alleged in the criminal case can lead to civil damages in a civil case. And, uh, plaintiffs often explore that route. That's very interesting. Now, for, for those, because there's some people out there saying that this could be potentially a money grab, a cash grab, because she went with the civil versus the criminal. What would you say to that? So again, it's not that she went. She's not in control of the criminal case. Okay. She can try to get him arrested, but they don't have to arrest her, right, based on what she says. Now, to the extent that she may be doing this for money, I don't know if there's evidence of that. And if there is, his lawyers will explore that and on cross-examination will question her about that, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't you only do this for money? Didn't you try to, uh, prior to filing a lawsuit, ask for X amount of money on this date? You know, so... Those there are ways to put that into a case. Um, and then you get into real murky territory about what is a money grab, what's a settlement demand, right? Settlement demands aren't admissible at trials generally. So a lot of legal questions that are still uh, to be resolved. Now, you did say like, you know, wealthy and, and powerful people. Now, had this been a regular person with this coming out, they would have been arrested right away. What, what do you think? You know, it, that's one of those questions that nobody can ever answer. I mean, you would like to think that that's not the case. Um, you know, the system certainly treats people with money differently. There's no doubt about that, right? In a case like this, the authorities and the prosecutors know that they're going to be up against something big here. They're up against a guy who can hire good lawyers, good investigators, Right. And so they may want to cross their T's and dot the, uh, their eyes. And that's simply an unfortunate consequence of the way the justice system works. Right? right. Things like money shouldn't matter, but they do. Now, if he is found uh, actually guilty or, you know, or, or any of these allegations that she's brought out, if he is found guilty of these things, based on what you know, I know there, all, all the facts aren't out currently, but based on the stuff that she put out now, um, in terms of time, if he were to be charged, how much time would he actually be looking at? Well, no. So this is a civil case. He's not mm -hmm. going to be found guilty. He's going to be found liable if he loses. Right. It's very different. This is about money. If it turns into a criminal case, mm -hmm. uh, he'll be charged under certain statutes. And those statutes carry with them oftentimes some sentencing range. So, again, it, it, we don't know if there's going to be a criminal case at all here. Right. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful there. What would be the uh, the actual smoking gun uh, as far as what can Cassie produce that would be able to help her win this case? You see, in a case like this, it's very hard to get a smoking gun because the allegations, as far as I understand, involve a pattern of, of behavior, right? A pattern mm -hmm. of abuse, allegations that he had her addicted to alcohol and drugs and had her perform sex acts with different people over time, right? Things like that. So you're never going to get, you know, this isn't a simple assault case where you have a video of an assault taking place and that's your evidence or yeah. a gun case where you quite literally find the smoking gun, right? That's not really how it works. Uh, this is a case that will involve testimony and will involve credibility, right? Who mm. will the jury, if it gets to that point, if it doesn't settle, who will the jury believe what witnesses will be uh, coming forward, what evidence will be introduced? And how do those things corroborate the stories, right? That's what will happen over time. This is a detailed, onerous process that takes a while. So yeah. we'll see how long that process takes and what that process shows. I was going to ask you the same thing. Like, how long do you think this potential case could, could take? Actually? Yeah, it could take anywhere up to a few, from a few months to years, a couple of yeah. years, right? And again, it depends because don't forget, this whole process, we're just at the beginning of it. 
And the process in court is really a vetting process, right? By which discovery comes out, documents, videos, photos, witness lists, and both sides will vet the case, right? Try to get more and more and more into detail before making motions and before going to a trial and doing other things. And look, at any point, the case could settle. You never know. I was thinking about that, too, because I think somewhere I heard somewhere that he did offer her an eight figure settlement previously. But I guess she didn't want that. She wants a lot more money than that. It seems. Yeah. But. Settlements are weird, right? Because settlements aren't admissible in the case. So you could offer somebody anything. They can't come into court and then say, well, you must have been wrong because you, otherwise you wouldn't have given me this money. Right. That's not how it works. The system is interested in people settling cases. So if you want to settle a case, the system will tell you do that. It can't be used against you generally. Now, let's talk about NDAs, because some people um, are, are mentioning, you know, some of his artists, they may have possibly been under an NDA. Do you think this is the particular case with Cassie with her taking so long uh, to come out? So NDAs, it's very different, and that's a great question, and a lot of people are confused about it. An NDA is a contract. That's all it is, right? It's a contract that says that you don't say certain things, and for that, you get a certain amount of money. That's it. If one of the parties breaches that contract, then there are damages, right? Perhaps the money is given back. Perhaps other things happen. You cannot, in a contract, prevent somebody from cooperating with criminal authorities, let's say. You can't contract around somebody's testimony, right? The system doesn't allow that for obvious reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Because then people with money would be able to just prevent themselves from going to jail, right? right. We can't have that happen. Mm -hmm. So um, NDAs don't really matter at this point. If somebody violates an NDA, um, they can be sued for damages, but that's it. And maybe those damages are a lot of money, and so, and so it's a big deal. But it doesn't have an impact on, on their ability to give testimony. Now, as far as you being an attorney with so much experience, what's your thoughts on all these allegations that came out, you know, with him doing things with Cassie, with him allegedly blowing up uh, the rapper Kit Cudi's car? Um, if that was your client, like, like, how would you be feeling right now? Well, I think that he's doing the right thing. I think he has good lawyers, very mm -hmm. good lawyers, and he's doing the right thing by staying out of the spotlight, not talking to anybody, not saying anything, and letting it all play out. I don't know much about the Kit Cudi stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but in terms of this case, he's in litigation, so he may want to lay low. Um, and I'm sure, you know, he's a very savvy, sophisticated guy. He's been through this before. He's been tried uh, for crimes in the past, right? So he, he knows the system and he knows that it's better to just do what your lawyers say, lay low, don't make statements. And if everything goes right, he should be okay. Now, do you feel that was smart uh, with the attorneys? Cause they quickly actually, um, responded to the actual lawsuit saying that, you know, she's basically trying to blackmail him for $30 million. Was that smart um, in terms of their defense? You know, that was more of a public relations thing, not, not, not a legal thing. Mm -hmm. um, to the extent they opened the doors to a defense and now gave the opposing side some insight as to where they were going, I don't think that was much of a secret, right? Mm -hmm. I think the lines of defense, at least some of them are pretty obvious which ones they're going to explore. Um, and so, again, should you do that in every case? No, this is a case with, you know, public relations implications that people in that industry must know something about. And so I'm assuming that's why that happened. Now, in terms of a statute of limitations, does that apply at all to this case? Yeah, another great question. So after the Me Too movement, right, a lot of people came out and said, what about me, right? I've been I was assaulted all these years ago, and now I'm out of luck, and that's not fair. And so what happened is they passed legislation here in New York and in other places, essentially extending the statute of limitations for people and saying uh, if you were um, assaulted in such a way that falls outside of the statute, we'll give you some more time. And so that's what happened here. Um, oh, wow. I think Trump was sued under that same statute, right? It allows people to to extend their time limit um, in an effort to protect victims and survivors. Wouldn't that kind of make it a little bit easier for some people to, to bring bring out erroneous lawsuits just to just to make money with them allowing so much time? They can like, hey, my daycare teacher, you know, things like that. Hey, uh, look. This is a litigious country. What can I say? 
uh, people sue here. And like I said <laughs> at, 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 at the top, unless there's a frivolous allegation, you can sue. And if you lose, more often than not, nothing will happen to you. So now we would like to hope that people don't just sue uh, for fun, right? We'd like <laughs> to presume that happens. We'd like to hope that when people testify at depositions and at trials and in courts, they don't lie, right? right. Um, and we have certain mechanisms in place to enforce that, but those mechanisms are limiting in some ways. And, and so, yeah, I mean, look, statutes of limitations – that extend many years, um, certainly give rise to the fact that evidence may be compromised and witnesses may forget and cases get weaker. And, and we hope that people in good faith operate within those guidelines, right? Now, you were saying there are certain mechanisms in place. Like what mechanisms um, are those? Well, if you file a lawsuit that you know is not true, mm -hmm. um, you can be sanctioned, right? Uh, if you're a lawyer, you can be disciplined in some way. Uh, if you're a client, uh, then rather a party to a lawsuit, then there are other kind of penalties the court can impose, right? If you lie under oath at depositions and at trials and in court, you can be charged with perjury, right? These things don't happen often, but they are the mechanisms that are in place. Anything else uh, you'd like to add um, in terms of, you know, this, this Diddy and Cassie thing? Yeah, I mean, look, there are two things here. Number one, it's important to keep the civil and criminal things separate. Right. Because there's a lot out there about is he going to jail? Is he guilty? These are all criminal things. These aren't civil things right now. He's in civil world. Right. Mm -hmm. He's risk at risk of losing money. Right. He's not at risk of going to jail yet. That can change. But he's certainly entitled to a presumption of innocence when he's charged, let alone before he's charged. Right. And in the civil case, the plaintiff has the burden of proof. And at this point, there's no wrongdoing there either because of that. Right. So we have to wait and see. And it, it's important to know that we are at the very beginning and we shouldn't jump to conclusions, right? right? It's entirely possible that these allegations are true and the evidence will prove that. And, and you know, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, but we have to wait for the evidence to come out. And, and, and when I say evidence, I mean the real evidence, the stuff that's going to be in court, not the stuff that's going to be out there, right? The stuff that's going to be relied upon by a fact finder, judge, jury or otherwise. Now, now, do you really feel like the, you know, the NYPD um, would actually let this, uh, these things slide if he is, um, you know, held liable with a civil trial? Uh, well, again, they, they don't need a, a, a verdict in the civil trial to pursue him criminally, right? Gotcha. They can do that any time. Mm -hmm. um, so you would like to think that they won't treat him differently, just like they don't treat anybody differently or they shouldn't treat anybody differently, I should say, right? Um mm -hmm. We rely on cops and prosecutors to do the right thing. You know, we hope that they do. Otherwise, kind of everything falls apart here. Right, right. All right, brother Dimitri, man, I definitely uh, appreciate your time, um, as always. Uh, definitely we'll look, uh, look forward to having you come back on here once we get uh, more information. And as Absolutely. the case moves forward, um, we'd definitely love to have you back on here for some more of your thoughts. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. So y'all, looks like 2024 is definitely turning out to be a wow year. We're only three months in and already shit's hit in the fan. Y'all drop a comment and let me know why y'all think Diddy did the damn dash. Y'all make sure you don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the videos. Share these videos and I'm gonna peep y'all on the next one. Holla. Can't get enough? Click on this screen to watch even more great content. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and you can also catch my clips on my other channel, The Lionel B Show Clips. And you can stream my audio on the go on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all other major podcast platforms.